Welcome back, everybody. Back in Emacs today. We're going to have some more Emacs fun here for you. Let's just go ahead and get things started. Just get. All right. So you may be wondering what we're looking at here. Well, you may recognize this. This is the the bare Emacs splash screen when you first install Emacs. You get this big white screen and you get some stuff here that you can click on, stuff that you can uh, take a look at. Got an Emacs tutorial here. So what's going on? Well, I basically uh, moved to a um, uh, kind of a separate uh, workstation here. This is a, um, a new setup I've got. So basically what I'm going to do is bring in my, my Emacs configuration and show you some of the process and some of the problems that uh, you might run into if you kind of uh, arrange things in a similar way as I have them. Uh, basically, I'll show you what I've got here. I've got a, um, on my, my Git repo here, I have my strats uh, repository. That's my strategic resource files, uh, as I call it. Basically, if we take a look in here, we've got a config.org file. That's a, it's just an org mode file that has my Emacs configuration in Elisp nested inside of it here. And a little bit of, um, uh, a little bit of it, uh, which you might call um, some literate programming. What do they call it? You know, when you're kind of telling the story of what's going on in your, in your little program. Um, I'm sure there's much more to it than that, but basically what I've got here is a, a document that is about what this document is about. And then there's this directive here to tangle this. Uh, there's, a, there's a function in Emacs in org babble that will just take the code snippets and put them in a file called .emacs, which is the, the configuration file where you want to save all this stuff. And um, basically... This is, it's sort of an extra step, but it, uh, it helps to keep things organized, at least for me, because I know what these code snippets do. It's kind of like the opposite of a normal program where you have code and you have comments. This is like comments with code inside of it, you know? So it's, uh, it's all about what, uh, what these different packages and things do. And you see, sometimes I might get a little, a little lazy here. But uh, this can be as detailed as, as you want it to be. And then you just tangle it into the file. And then when Emacs loads, it'll load just the, the configurations. And I have a, a custom custom file as well. If you use the custom system to customize different variables, it'll put them in, um, at least I have it set to put them in this file. I also have my own uh, bookmarks and um, abbreviation files too. So I, you, can, you can even version control those and move those around if you want to save them, uh, which is also helpful. But uh, basically setting up a new system, these are the things I like to have. Uh, what will happen is um, when I bring this in, I'm going to clone this repository and then open up Emacs. Well, we're going to tangle the, the code blocks, of course. And then we're going to start Emacs. And there's probably going to be errors because I probably haven't set up all of the additional uh, files and folders and things. But we can set those up uh, as we see them. And you'll see how that'll go. So let's uh, buckle up and... Uh, and see what happens here. So as I mentioned, we're going to want to clone the repository. So that's the, you know, that's the step that's going to require a bit of command line here. So we're going to git clone. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the configuration is set up so that it will look for these files in, uh, in, in places that we, that we designate. So for example, to load the the custom file, it's going to look in a directory called strats, which matches the, the name of the repository. So I'm going to go ahead and clone it into the home directory so that at least that is all set up already, just to make it a little bit easier. But you can put it in any directory you want, as long as you, you know, you update those things. All right, so we're going to go and pull down this repository. So let's give it the, the address. That's the, that's the website and the location of the repository. As you see it's cloning into strats is what we want. And of course the, all right. Um, yeah, so it uses SSH keys to log in. That's for security purposes. But you'll see here it has 
brought everything down, so that should be pretty good. Now, let's go over to Emacs. We should be able to get DRED into strats and fig.org. And because it is a org mode file, we see here that it's got everything, everything set up where it's supposed to. All right, so actually, I don't have any of my custom keys set up, of course. So let's go ahead and tangle this. Control C, Control V, Control T. That didn't do it. Oh, wait, it did. You see in the mini buffer, uh, tangle 28 code blocks from config.org. All right, so now, now the fun really begins. I'm going to close Emacs. I don't need the, the, the repo anymore. And let's open up Emacs again. It's going to be so much opening. All right, so you see it's doing the um, the package refreshing. It's reaching out to the package repositories to bring down things that we want to install because I use the, the use package program to put in these declarations that say, I want to use this package. So go ahead and grab it when this configuration loads so that it's installed. I don't know. It's going to be, it'll be great if it really installed everything on the first shot, but um, it doesn't always do that. So, uh, you know, there's going to be lots of closing and opening. But I could be wrong. It could, it could, you know, really all work in one shot this time. There will still be errors, of course, because as I mentioned, some of the some of the directories and extra files that I might need uh, have not been created yet. So there you go. Yeah. So the file is missing. Um, ah, yeah. So it can't find ox extra because that's an org contrib package. So um, let's just close. And well, actually, before before we close, I'm going to go ahead and set up. Um, do I have a dot local? Yeah. I think I like to have a, a local file called list.el. Well, let me see here. Actually, this is a this is a file that, that I don't want a version control. So that if I'm on a, an individual workstation and I need something that is just for that workstation, I don't want to put in the configuration that's that's on the web. I'll put it in that little list file. So. Um, yeah, oh, I also don't have my little Sentinel program. Uh, but let's actually comment that out for now because um, I may not want to bring that in just yet. Uh, so now I've retangled. Let's close Emacs and open again. As promised, there's going to be so much opening. Closing and opening. Okay, so I think it grabbed the... I think it grabbed the org contrib packages there. And it's uh, installing the newest version of org mode, it looks like. So we should be on the latest and greatest. Sorry about the white screens. Some people don't like the white screens. It'll go away pretty soon. Uh, okay, so what's missing now? Uh, okay, so yeah, it hasn't found that that aux extra package yet. I think this is normal because now that we've installed the contrib packages, now it's um, we're going to go back and and actually load it. So when it actually loads it, it'll actually find it. I presume. I presume that's what's going to happen. You don't want to make too many presumptions with Emacs. All right, let's do some more opening of Emacs. So much opening. Okay. More installations of things. Installations of packages, I should say. Uh, Octech. That's a really nice LaTeX package. Uh, okay, so stuff is loading. I can see it's asking me to load a theme. Uh, there you go. Okay, so uh, yeah, my, my website is missing. Uh, we can pull that down too. Uh, so that would be 
How would you get? Yeah, it's supposed to find it in the home directory. Okay, so get clone. Bar, bar lib. Uh, Okay. okay, so that brought down my website, so that should take care of that error. Let's close and reopen Emacs. Just honest, a lot of uh, a lot of opening happening. Uh, okay, so now it looks like we're installing VTerm. That's cool. Uh, yes, let's compile it. This is pretty cool. Vterm is a terminal emulator in, in Emacs. Is that the correct term, terminal emulator? So that way, as you saw before, how I had to open up a terminal to do some, some Git, Git stuff, uh, you know, we won't have to, to do that in another program. We can do it right from Emacs. which can be helpful sometimes, but it's not always necessary. It's more helpful if you're doing like a very bare minimalist installation where you just have your operating system and uh, Emacs is your, your window manager, you know, if you use EXWM or something like that. That's not what I've got going on these days. I did a video about uh, some issues I had in, in EXWM which are probably or most likely not the fault of the program, but, but mostly um, my, uh, my user error. Um, one weird thing, and maybe this has been fixed, but uh, TRAMP, the, the Emacs SSH connection, uh, whatever you, whatever you, I'm not sure what the technical term is. Is it a, it's, it's something that basically facilitates um, really fast and good SSH connections to, to servers. So you can just, uh, basically, log into your server, and you can edit the files directly as if you're, you know, as if they're they're local. But it's it's facilitating this connection. Uh, when I would when I would load up Tramp in an EXWM, it would seem to hang pretty easily. I'm not sure, not sure why, but oh, maybe this is done. Can I close this? Oh, okay. So it looks like I guess VTerm is installed. Let's close Emacs again to make sure that everything came in properly and uh, open it again. Okay, yeah, so it opened up much faster that time. I think that's it. You can hit F11 to make it full screen. I think that's it. I think my, my Emacs configuration uh, is all loaded. So that's about it. That was actually pretty easy. I guess I've... Uh, I guess I've organized my config file pretty well. Uh, but there you go. That is transferring your, your Emacs configuration to uh, another workstation and setting everything up the way you like it. So there you go. Now uh, we're inside the file. I've got all my key commands. I think that's pretty good. So I will, I will go ahead and leave it there. Now that we're on the on this new workstation, there's going to be more videos and other things happening. So I'll talk to all you guys later.